Back live tonight, you're in focus, and thanks for staying on. Let's take you back to that matter. Then, Andre Dereta could face legal action for commissioning a privately funded and unauthorized intelligence gathering on ESCOM. Legal steps may also be taken against Business Leadership South Africa for funding a private investigation. Former Police Commissioner George Fivers' company, George Fivers Forensic and Risk, was tasked with conducting the intelligence gathering. The Special Investigating Unit says it's still obtaining legal advice on the matter. Newsroom Africa's our team Tongana starts us off. When former Eskom Group CEO Andre Dereta made damning allegations of corruption and criminal activities at the power utility last year, Parliament embarked on a fact-finding mission. The public account watchdog Scoper called on Dereta, Public Enterprises Minister Pravin Gordon, National Security Advisor to President Cyril Ramaphosa, Dr. Sidney Mufamadi, and various law enforcement agencies to come and appear before it. Dereta's allegations included claims that criminal cartels are wreaking havoc at Eskom's Mpumalanga plants, corruption surrounding contracts awarded to companies for the procurement of coal and maintenance services, as well as sabotage of the power utilities infrastructure by unemployed foreign nationals and Eskom staff members to procure emergency excessive funds. These allegations have been reflected on by the Hawks from a privately funded intelligence report which was commissioned by the Rater without the permission of relevant accounting authorities or the Eskom board. According to the Special Investigating Unit, George Fivers Forensics and Risk, a company owned by former National Police Commissioner George Fivers, was tasked by an independent association, Business Leadership South Africa, headed by former ESCOM board member Busisiwe Mavuso, in order to gather intelligence on the power utility. This report, actually the way it was commissioned was unauthorized. Right? Uh, the former group CEO of ESCOM was not authorized to do this. He did this out of his own. He did not inform the board. Uh, he collaborated with private sector companies to raise funds and the funders, uh, there's no one who's willing to disclose the funders, uh, uh, which in itself is fundamentally an issue uh, for us. That, uh, and, and that's why we are saying we really look, need to look at the legal framework so that this doesn't create a precedent that anyone, any CEO can now go out and get funding from non-disclosed funders, work with private sector, private sector companies to investigate state institutions. But here we have this great vigor to pursue him and not the others. Why are we not pursuing the others in the same way? Why? Is it because they have connections? Advocate Mativi and you, General Labia, have said uh, you don't want to say who the names are there. Well, I'm going to ask you, is the name of David Mabuza in that report? Without naming anyone, the SIU confirmed that names of politicians are among other individuals and companies identified in the private intelligence report. The investigating unit says legal constraints prevented from publicizing the names and that investigations are still underway. While the police's National Commissioner Fani Masemula told Scoper that 20 arrests linked to Eskom corruption are imminent. Brigadier Yap Berger, who has been identified by Scopa as a central figure in the investigations of corruption at Eskom, is still unable to appear before Parliament due to safety and security concerns which he has now raised with the Speaker of the National Assembly. 
Today, Scopa found out that Mr. Berger is no longer working for the South African Police Service and they will further engage the Speaker of the National Assembly on how to proceed with regards to his appearance. For Newsroom Africa on Channel 405, I'm Tim Tongana in Parliament.